In every generation, there's a moment where everything changes. This is one of those moments. Introducing GE Additive. Yeah, I'm Terry Woolers, uh, principal, consultant, uh, founder, and president of Woolers Associates, based in Fort Collins, Colorado, United States. And in the time that you've been in the industry, how has it changed? Oh, wow. We've seen a lot of change recently, especially in the last couple of years, where companies before have used it for modeling, prototyping, some tooling applications, but now the, the next frontier and the big opportunity is to apply it to production quantities. And so uh, medical, dental, aerospace companies, some consumer products, and eventually automotive uh, will also uh, adopt it for, uh, for production. And what innovations are exciting you most at the moment? Well, metals are, are very hot. They're smoking hot right now. We're seeing new machines, new materials, uh, companies not buying one or two machines at a time, but looking at buying five, ten, even more. Uh, GE, for example, they're planning to need about 1,000 machines over the next 10 years, and we anticipate other companies needing uh, large quantities of machines and materials as well. Still uh, a lot of uh, work that needs to be done in terms of uh, quality such as uh, reliability and repeatability, uh, know-how, especially on the design end of the uh, process uh, spectrum, and so, but uh, the sky's the limit. Do you think that GE's um, investment in the industry has somewhat validated it? Absolutely. Uh, GE, the, the, the day they made that announcement, for example, uh, some South Koreans that I spoke with yesterday said that uh, when GE made that announcement, that about 10 times more people in South Korea had come to them and now are interested in metal additive manufacturing. And in fact, before, most people and companies in the country really didn't take metal additive te technology seriously, but now they're taking it very seriously. Do you think that uh, with all of this investment, we're facing some kind of a skills gap, and what do you think we need to do to bridge that? Yeah, there's a, a lot of opportunity for improving uh, skills, so, so that really is more hands-on training types of skills on part production, uh, post-processing parts, the, the, the really big opportunity, though not that those aren't, but on the design side, to really optimize designs, to take advantage of the technology, to consolidate many parts into fewer parts, and to use as little material and to reduce weight as much as possible. And, and that can be done with additive manufacturing. So companies are hard at work trying to figure that out, to, to, to understand you know, what's it going to take for us to, to make that transition from conventional design and manufacturing to additive manufacturing. You mentioned post-processing there, is, uh, and one thing we see is quite a lot of companies trying to automate the process. Do you think we do need to do more of that? Yeah, well, if you don't streamline and, and reduce labor, then uh, it can make the difference between justifying the use of additive technologies for production. If you have lots of manual labor, then it becomes too expensive and, and you revert back to the old way of, of doing things. And so to sell the technology within a company and to get the support and investment, you really need to, to show that you can automate a lot of the downstream processes such as powder removal, uh, removing the, the parts from the build plate, uh, the, the thermal stress relief, there's just a lot of steps, things like uh, hot isostatic pressing, which is uh, ensure there's no porosity inside the part, uh, post-processing of the surfaces, surface, surface treatment, other heat treatment, uh, surface coatings, inspection, all those things uh, need to be taken into account and, and the uh, companies need to find ways to reduce the, the time and, and cost of, 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 of all of these steps that, that are, are required, especially for aerospace and, and uh, medical related parts. How do you think that the hype of 2013 and 14 affected the market? Was it a negative thing or was it a positive thing in some ways? Well, yeah, there was a lot of hype. Uh, it really started around 2012 and maybe even earlier, but it, it drove up share prices among the publicly traded companies. It created uh, unrealistic expectations. Uh, a lot of readers and people that uh, would have conversations, they just plain got it wrong. Uh, there a lot of misconceptions and myths out there that push button that it was simple, that every home would have one or more 3D printers, and, and so that's a whole other subject. But uh, I, overall, it was, I think, good in the sense that it created awareness 
like the 3D printed gun, uh, regardless of your, your, your views of guns, uh, it, it introduced the subject of 3D printing to a lot of people. And so uh, the first step in adopting the technology is to become familiar with it. And so uh, overall it was good. It drove the share prices up uh, to perhaps uh, inflated uh, zones. And, and so it became uh, a situation where when things go up, they often come down and they did starting in uh, January 2014. And so, uh, but if you look at everything else, you know, the, the uh, investments that are being uh, made, uh, the new products and services, the, the investments by national governments, everything else uh, points in the upward direction, the growth of the industry, 31.5% over the last three years uh, on average. So uh, except for the share prices, everything else is, is uh, looking very, very good for this industry.